Hello, I'm Luke Neller and welcome to Best View Plays of the Week. In this episode we have... A hero returning riding upon a strange looking steed. An example of French mobility over armour. And a scout with a licence to kill. Let's start the show. So Numskull from episode 40 is back with a steel walled game featuring the odd-looking 59 pattern. So what do you get if you mount a pattern's turret on a Type 59? If nothing else, it's a chance to see just how huge those American turrets are. In the first clash, the front armor shrugs off a lower tier medium's fire, but that's not much of an achievement yet. So Numskull follows up with another kill and spends some time harassing a Ferdinand. A KV gets finished off as well, but the 90mm gun has trouble hurting an IS-6, even with heat rounds. The Ferdinand makes the mistake of not taking Sir Numskull seriously, but it's not alone. The 59 Patton's thin armour is holding up amazingly well. The last two allies blow up, leaving the steel wall alone with the last three opponents. They are all powerful machines, but you wouldn't guess it from the ease in which the Numskull takes out the first two. The IS-6 remains a tough nut to crack, and it survives several hits from heat rounds. It can't hold on forever though, and the steel wall carries the day. This tank really isn't that well protected, so bouncing over 4,000 damage is quite a feat. The perfectly accurate gunnery with 6,000 damage dealt is impressive as well. <laughs> Staying on the EU servers is the scout with a license to kill, as Zinter 007 drives a French AMX 1390 on Prokhorovka. 007 takes the spirited AMX Roadster up to a lookout point, and shakes off pursuers with a confident handbrake turn. The hillside is crawling with hostiles, and lighting them up keeps 007 busy for a while. A 50B leads the charge and 007 follows without hesitation. Sadly, there's nobody left to shoot here. Here we go! Her Majesty's famous assassin takes out two artillery pieces and puts the remaining round into a charging medium tank. 007 sneaks up on a Waffenträger, only to find the last artillery piece instead. Three rounds secure a very shiny medal and the rest of the drum gets fired at an E-75. The E-3 charges through the building like a beefy henchman, but the fight doesn't end well for the bad guy. Finally, a real chance to take out the Waffenträger, but 007 is down to four rounds. One, Two, three, four. Every shot hits, but it's not enough. 007 is forced to retreat while a brave ally gets overwhelmed. The scout will have to finish this alone. Once the Waffenträger shows its face again, a single shot is enough to secure the kill. The E-75 is another matter, however. 007 is down to 5 APCR rounds and can't risk taking a single hit from the big bruiser. The opponent is spotted as the 2 minute warning blares out. 007 dishes out the damage but the enemy is almost diabolically tough. One last reload as time is running out. These 6 shells will have to be enough. Alright, for Queen and Country. The first shot hits the ground. But the next two strike home. The fourth shot bounces, as does the fifth. 
The game comes down to a single bullet, which takes out the bad guy with 8 seconds left on the clock. Well done, James. I mean, 007. Only two missed shots in all that action, and winning the game with seconds on the clock for added drama. Roll credits! It's time for this week's Top Gun, brought to you by Leo Star 1 from the American region. The Type 64 light tank lands in the middle tier on Siegfried Line, and Leo starts by heading to the southeastern corner of the city. The OI shrugs off a hit. But the T-67 is made of softer stuff. Enemy artillery tries to avenge the Fallen, but doesn't come anywhere close. This KV-85 chooses to ignore the nippy little type and pays for it with his life. Gissing at the OI proves difficult until a friendly firefight gives it a little push. One shot and it's gone, but an almost dead T-1 Heavy damages the engine. Leo clambers over some more rubble and takes revenge on a low-tier heavy. Pouncing on the IS at full speed is a good plan, but the foe is quick on the trigger. At least the damage roll was survivable though, and there's a second heavy here to be claimed as a bonus. That's top gut, but Leo isn't even close to being done. An A43 quickly becomes kill number 7, and the hunt is on for number 8. A speeding EOC receives two hits as it races past, and a Sherman 3 gets taken down. The French TD comes around the block to attack from the rear, but Leo beats it to the draw. Nine down and two to go. The type goes on an arty hunt and almost runs into one of them. Two shots, and they are down to a single SPG. It's found lucky near the capture zone, and while it does get a shot off, it's far off the mark. Good game. Nice work, Leo Star 1. 11 kills while driving a fast and fragile light tank on a city map. Bonus points for not being top tier. This week's defender is Roy M18 from the EU region. Roy's battle chariot is the AMX Chasseur de Char, and the tier 10 battle is fought over highway. The CDC is fast but fragile, and at the bottom of the pack, it might just as well be made out of tinfoil. The only exciting thing to happen in the early part is finishing off a distant T-49. Let's skip ahead a little. The game is now 4 against 8, and Roy is helping to take down a Tier 9 Batjet. The fight continues with the Centurion AX. After the dust settles, the game is 2 vs 6. More enemies keep coming in, and the last ally falls in the escalating battle. The odds are impossible, but Roy keeps fighting, claiming one last kill. And then another. The next kill brings the enemy numbers down to three. Can a bottom tier medium really pull this off? The Chasseur de Char was designed at a time when the French thought armor was obsolete, and only speed would matter. Roy surviving that fight may just validate that thinking, at least to some degree. Two of the remaining enemies start a capture, and the defender needs to get back to work. The VK rolls out to do battle and shrugs off the APCR rounds. Is still vulnerable to being outplayed, however, and the CDC's mobility carries the day once again. A hit from the T-34 takes Roy below 50 hit points, and the defender speeds away to deal with the RT instead. It's found lurking near the enemy base, and puts up quite a fight before going down.
That just leaves the T-34, which has gone back to the circle. Roy manages a sneaky reset, but the Heavy is now wide awake. Both tanks are below 50 hit points, and the next hit will decide the game. Roy changes position, peeks out, and catches the enemy looking the wrong way. It's GG. Amazing work there, Roy M18. Quick thinking and a fast tank. Carry the day when you are alone in that scrimmage. Defender of the week, and then so. For the finale, we have a pair of IS-3s from the American service fighting in the Arctic region. Ernstus has gone with snow camo, while Blade Fire 5 prefers the basic Soviet army colors. The pair heads straight for the southeastern choke point. They start dishing out a respectable amount of damage, but allies on the other flank seem to be getting slaughtered. Blade Fire opens the tally for the platoon, then Ernstus pushes forward and softens a Diga Zwei for Blade Fire's second kill. The platoon splits up, each fighting their own battle. Bladefire ends up taking some serious damage, so Ernstus turns around to help deal with the SCA-2. One good hit sets the opponent up for a finishing shot, and Bladefire is ready to pick up the kill. That's three for the platoon. The way ahead would be clear if not for their exposed rear. The IS-3s group up tight and start serving coordinated 1-2 punches to the opposing force. Ernstus heads out to stop the capture, while Bladefire secures the fourth kill for the platoon. An M12 attempts to prevent the decap, but ends up getting killed by Bladefire instead. The capture gets quite far, but a double reset crushes the M6 Invader dreams. Once again, the opponent gets softened up nicely for Bladefire to finish the match with a top gun. That looked almost planned so that Ernstus set them up and Bladefire 5 picks up the kills. Don't worry, Ernstus, we value both of you equally. And the Confederate medal is just as shiny. That's all for this week. This episode was for your eyes only on Her Majesty's Secret Service with the man with the golden gun. I'm Luke Nella, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.